welcome to Match Fishing Masterclass Questions. You join me here today in the tackle room with Michael Buckwalder. How you doing, Mike? You right? Hello, Ricky. How you doing, mate? All right? Yeah, it's good, mate. Good. Struggling, struggling through lockdown, but we're surviving. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just what it is, isn't it? Yeah. We're all in the same boat. We can't go fishing, so kit preps the way forward, basically, for me. That's it, mate. I think we've just got to think of it as the old... Um, the old close season, Close really. season, yeah. Yeah. We survived back then three months, didn't we, about yeah. going... Yeah, so the if, jobs at home for the missus. Yeah, if if we aim off for the fifteenth of June, I don't think we'll, we'll go far wrong for for pleasure fishing anyway. Yeah, pleasure yeah. fishing. Yeah, I think matches will be a bit off, bit after that. I think some people are a bit hopeful, but I think we'll probably back hopefully we're back to full running capacity by September really for the world pairs and the sort of start of the the Irish season really. Yeah. If if That's anyone uh, doesn't know doesn't know Bud, which is doubtful, he's just a hero. Um, he loves. Going out to Ireland to, to fish. So, you've got some Irish heritage, haven't you, bud? There yeah, you go, there you go. <laughs> True Irish fashion. Got some Guinness. Yeah, my mum's uh, born and bred there, and all my family still live there. So, live up by the Giants Causeway, a place called Lima Valley. So, we're over there all the time. Yeah. So, like, it's a home from home, really. Lovely. Lovely. Probably spend more time there on holiday than anywhere else, really. Yeah. And you've been in the Irish feeder team now for, what, four years, bud? Yeah, I didn't fish South Africa last year because obviously my little boy Henry was born yeah. in uh, the end of September, so it wasn't fair to on the end to leave and yeah. go to Africa for two weeks in, in February. So I knocked, the, knocked that one on the head and just stayed at home. But I fished um, West Serbia the first year, and, uh, a bit sort of wet behind the gills, really. And uh, luckily, I don't know how I won my section on the second day. Yeah, I can like, remember that, yeah. Win. Weren't uh, they fishing for right Bleak? Portugal, right, they? Weren't you fishing for Bleak then on a feeder? No, in Serbia, it was. Um, Catching like these weird catfish things that are really spiky, yeah. And they have these long, like mega big bleak skimmers, yeah. real different kind of fishing. We got it totally wrong first day, like, we put those leaves in, and the fish were everywhere. And second day, Brendan said, Fish to you, how you want to fish, really. So I'm just going down a pure ground bait route and won my section. So Fair happy bike, days, a bit of ambition, really, with my section of world champs. And done it on the first ever attempt, so plenty of downhill, really. Fair if the uh, if the has the world champs been cancelled this year, is it? Yeah, it's been knocked on the head, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just too dangerous, mate, isn't it? Yeah. France, where, where, where the World Champs is in France, is like an epicentre there as well, so yeah. it's not... And so many travelling teams are into the all over the world, isn't there? So, mm. the only fair and safe way to do it is to cancel it. And I think I'm, I'm talking to, obviously, really good friends with Dean and stuff, and talking to him and some of the other guys, and it looks like they're going to hopefully move the whole calendar to next year, so it'll still be the same venue, so all the ferries can get vouchers, all the pavement yeah. ferries and bits and pieces, yeah. and roll it over to next year. Okay. The venue looks outstanding, so we don't want to be moved to Ukraine because obviously that's the back end of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. And obviously France is a bit easier to get to. What what the what you're fishing for in France on the venue? Yeah, it looks you know? like a, it looks like skimmers, really. Those are skimmers between sort of uh, sort of three or four pound bream, really. So yeah, but fishing looks really good. Everyone I spoke to you said it's brilliant. I mean, yeah. Babsy's one of the the, the Preston guys. I spoke to him at, at length about it. And he said it's one of the best best feeder venues in Europe. So really. Hopefully it goes on next year, and you never know. Sort of six months for the that it gets left left alone might improve the venue. So mm, maybe, the same yeah. like, I think a lot of venues over here, like Ferry Meadows and stuff, you're going to go back to be fishing on there, and it's going to be really, really good. Yeah, yeah. It's like who's going fishing? Nobody, isn't there? There's a few probably, a few numpties probably sneaking in the back of venues and going that, but on a whole, most of us are being law abiding and not going really. Yeah, yeah. I think to be fair, as a whole, mate, I think Anglings, um, anglers should be proud of themselves. Done, they've done a than the sport of credit, to be honest. They have, yeah, yeah, they have, yeah. Before we go, we'll have to talk about my uh, proposed NHS match at the end before we go, because I've got some oh. exciting news about that. And, and so, oh, brilliant. Uh, and obviously, you've got a lot of uh, followers on your channel. It's a perfect chat with you and getting you guys and some of your people involved as well, mate, yeah. honest. What, yeah, whatever whatever I can do to help, mate, just let, let me know and I'll, I'll help you. Yeah, yeah we've got some, uh, got some cloud. Basically, we've got, um, I'll just we'll talk about it now. We now we've brought it up. We'll have a quick yeah. chat. And yeah, yeah. There's a... Um, the guy from South Africa called Shaheed, who's a frontline doctor. So when I got my first post on about two or three weeks ago, he's messaged me. I've known from the World Champs and fishing the World Pairs in Ireland. He's got um, a few companies over there, so he's obviously doing quite well for himself. And he's come on board and said he wants to pay for an app for Android and iOS to host it all. So basically, you'd be able to book on the match through Android and iOS, yeah. or a fishery to book on. You pay your money there, even for a just giving page or, or a charity, charity. We've not set that bit up yet. We're still at the security testing point of the app now. So when that's all released, you'll be able to download it to your phone free, click onto it, 
and uh, all the information regarding the match. It makes like a token draft, a bit of a forum on there and that. So yeah, I'm going to try and kick match fishing sort of into the 21st century a bit, really, rather than just everyone slapping each other off on Facebook and Twitter yeah, yeah. and trying to, try and do it right. So that's a bit of a watch this space thing. But we're going to try and go for two, three, four thousand angles. The idea is there's there's so many angles in the country, isn't there? But yeah. what we're going to try and aim at is not as much as the matches like a fishing. Yeah. So like we all go fishing on a designated day together. Yeah. Right. Every rivers, canals, lakes, drains, commercials. There's skippers on boats. There's flying anglers, bike anglers on boats. If you can all go fishing the same day and to show the country that fishermen unite for the NHS. Yeah. All fish the same day. There's a nominal fee. Say you all put twenty pound in each. Yeah. You know, five hundred anglers putting five thousand people putting twenty quid in each. In. There's a lot of money in it, though. A lot of money, mate. Yeah. And the scope there. I spoke to Simon Jones, Pete Archer wants to help me out. I yeah. spoke to Keith Arthur. I spoke to Rob Hughes. Yeah. So all one hundred percent help, mate. All, everyone's, all everyone's coming on board, saying yeah, we'll, we'll put our name to it and stuff like that. So possibility there to earn. We're not quite going to be a uh, captain, uh, Tom yeah. Moore stand. Yeah. But we could range fifty grand as an anglers and. Yeah. Just show what they're about, really. So that's what the idea was, and uh, hopefully it progresses in the right direction. I'm sure I, I can't see many people being negative about the situation yeah. at the moment. So I think most people jump behind it and throw whatever you can at it, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll but not the, the idea was like rather than having like me organise everything, like there's venues near you, like 15, 20, 30 peg matches each Saturday and Sunday. We could get every single person or match in your country that wants to be part of it, told and opened for a match on the yeah. same day, or all turn up at the same day, fish for. Bit, bit pride, really. Yeah, yeah. You have to constantly, everyone fishes for pride and trophies, don't they? No one yeah. fishes for them. Yeah, yeah. All for the same day. There's no real designated winner apart from the NHS, so it's just going to get everyone together on the same day. Even if you've got like pin badges on it, like a bit of a badge of honour, something yeah. like that, or wristbands like to do for uh, Help the Hero, something yeah. like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you've got any ideas, feel free to drop me a message on Messenger and that. I've, I've got so many friend requests now. I need to set up a Facebook page, really, as opposed to, you know, I've totally maxed out for ages now, so I need to set up a yeah. page as opposed to. Not accepting followers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should set up a page. It's really easy, mate. Really, really easy. There's only one big downside of setting up a page. Go on. Dean Barlow. Dean. Why? Dean. Because me and Dean have said for about the last five years, first person to set up a page, we're going to absolutely rip each other apart. It's it's like the most. uh, It's the Dean distinct as well. Just keep each other. I won't go any further into we keep ripping each other and do uh, what's it? A new hoop. If I do it first, he'll berate me for years. If he does it first, I'm going to berate him for years. I might we'll just invite him to dive in. Yeah. We'll have to set one up and call it the Dean Barlow page. Go on purpose, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll love that, wouldn't he? Yeah. No. Same. Have, you got, have you got any questions you want to yeah, ask? Yeah, I've got three <laughs> questions <laughs> Three questions for you, bud. Go on. So, the first one is, I hear a top of... I hear top feeder anglers say that they have fish braid straight through. But I don't under- understand how you would do that. Uh, yeah, braised straight through is not something I'm a massive fan of, to be honest. I know like one of my real close friends, Gareth Lambert, fishes it everywhere. But literally everywhere. Yeah. Like bream for news up to like very meadows, he fishes braised straight through and stuff like that. But the only time I would do it really for me <clears> is I I'd still fish a shop leader, maybe say a two foot long fish fishing for roach. Just so I can have me running rig on a on a bit of mono really little like that long. Yeah. The problem I've got is I'm a bit heavy-handed, so I like to read them in a bit. So basically, all you're doing is exactly the same rig as that, that you can see that going through there, going yeah. down to it. It's exactly the same rig. All you're doing is just tying it with braid. It's no different to tying it as you would a mono. It's exactly the same, just with braid. Yeah. But for me, it's a massive negative in the fact that over here, we're fishing for bigger fish all the time. Like you go on the main like, feeder master circuit, you don't really win your 20 peg section unless you catch him skimmers or bream, do you? It's very no. rare you get through yeah. fishing for rope. So what I think is every bite... Every bite counts, really. So for me, I know guys love it, but I just don't yeah. get it. I'm honest, just yeah. but then you get, it's certain people we fish so like Gareth uses old cargo tech ones, which are like basically Argos rods of the eighties, isn't yeah. they? Yeah. They get time in a knot at the bottom, yeah. so they're soft enough. But the rods I use, and I use the obviously distance miles, a lot mine. They're a bit a bit stiffer in the middle. Yeah. For me to be able to fish braid straight through, I'd have to like I have to limp wrist it sort of thing. And it just doesn't work, so I always fish a shock leader, really. Okay. And how, how long would how long? About two foot shock leader. Two foot for fishing for roach, but if I'm fishing for bream or skimmers, I'm, I'm always five meters. Five meters. Yeah, five meters. Yeah, I've got a I've got like a measuring stick, like a meter long rule. Yeah. And a, a prong at the bottom, which I put my swivel onto. They yeah. just do five lengths of it. Yeah. It's five meters, so every single shock leader is the same length. So, and how, how do you tie your shock leader on, bud? Uh, I 
Nudd's shoes. Uh, Nuddy showed me years ago, Bob Nudd. And I've seen these new fandangled loops and twists and yeah. stuff. There, but I don't see the point in them because you've got to basically sit there. Twizzle one side up, twizzle the other side up, yeah. loop it through, put it, make sure it's all nice and neat. But I've just tied, I've got, a, on my brain, I've got a single overhand loop yeah. on my main line, just basically straight through, half turn, blood knot, yeah, yeah. put it right. I've, yeah. I've caught a fish by the time you finish to fanny round tying that thing yeah. back on it. Yeah, that's the way I would, so, I would tie it as well. I know Steve Ringer does the same. Ringer, and I, Steve does it the same, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've seen a couple I've of people do it different ways, but I don't know if they're just trying to be different. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, but I just think sometimes you're trying to find an edge that's not there. Mm, yeah. And I, and I think people are saying, like, fish prey straight through, because it's a bit of a, like, in thing at the moment, where yeah. everyone's like, I'll oh, fish prey straight through, I'm a bit of a hero. Yeah. Whereas, like, whereas I just like fishing. And that new, um, what's that new feeder gum breathing or fishing, fishing braid, a bit of feeder gum on the end, like a six inch bit of feeder gum. Okay. Do you use that, dear bud? No, uh, uh, I don't. No, I've tried it a few times. I don't get entangled with people, so they get tangled, but I don't. I've only fish like this sort of four to six inch bit of power gum in the eight pound you don't get entangled yeah and then again i've tried it a few times especially at tamar last year but the way i fish because i'm so i get a bite on aggressive yeah too yeah. aggressive but yeah uh, i know steve fished in iberia master didn't he fished it yeah fished it. i know dean used it a lot so mm. maybe it's something we can look at for preference yeah yeah i, I just see it making like trying to fix something that's not broken yeah that's, you catch enough fish like if I suppose if something was going wrong in your rig, you'd need yeah, to try and rectify it. But yeah, if nothing's point, wrong, yeah. then yeah. But if you're catching fish and, and, and winning things and, and framing regular, yeah. Why? Why change it? Advantage, yeah. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So the answer to that question in layman's terms is try no, it. Yeah. There's no, no need for it really. Go back. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. It's not for me. I've tried it. It's not for me. But. Roddy and Arnold, and obviously the part of the world pair, fishes yeah. it all the time. I love it, fishes brace straight through everywhere. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have, we have the same results, and uh, we yeah. fish pretty much the same but different, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The only thing that stopped me from doing it before is I like quite a stiff boom below below my feeder. And I yeah. think with, with braid, would, would you get a stiff boom still? Yeah, yeah, but you put it, I mean, some get close to trailers. I use them, maybe he's not beginning, so that's pretty, you know, that'd be well bad. Oh, don't do that. Where's my camera gone there, look? No, look, I'm yeah, bring, bring it back towards you a bit. You can see it now, look. Bring it back a bit, bit more towards you. Yeah, perfect. Just there, you yeah. See that? Yeah. A little kicker. Yeah. That is, uh, it's actually taken from the car belt, that is. Yeah. And, uh, it's a core and a corder kicker. So basically, you're braid. You see how it's kicking it right off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just use one of them, like a number nine stop, yeah. and then slide, slide that down on the top of it. You just sort of see it there, and yeah. it just kicks it right out. Yeah. That's what I use. And what's and what's that called? A corder kicker? Yeah, it's a corder kicker there, yeah. I'll have to look at that. Yeah, right, they're, 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 quite, they're, they're not cheap. They're £4.15 for yeah. like 10 but Yeah. Sure. That's only, it's only, what's that, 40p? 40p yeah. per one? Yeah. But, but I fish like, fish a £10 shop, unless you're going to, obviously, fish a really snaggy venue, you wouldn't yeah. do it. Yeah. But if you can use like that many snaggy venues in the UK, do we? You couldn't fish on the air because it cost you thirty five pound a match in bloody kickers because yeah. you lose everything every time you shut out. Yeah. But, well, have a look at that, guys. Yeah. Unless you really try it. If you struggle with braid, one of them quarter kickers. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. That. Not something the match guys do, is it? No, that's really good. So, really good. Um, the art, guys. Let's have a look at the next question. Okay, so have you got a, uh, so I only have two reels for feeder fishing, and when I try to spool them up, I always underfill my spool. How can I get around this without having to em without without having to empty the spool to put to put the line and backing on first? I mean, you're not really, are you? The only way I do it is to obviously we all when you buy a reel, you get a spare spool, don't you? Yeah. So if, you, if you've got two reels, you still have a spare spool. So the way to do it is to read everything back off and start again, really. I know it's a bit of messing about enough to get it right. I mean, just to show you that one there. Yeah. Where it's lit perfect. Yeah. I know that, that that takes on a on a backing. If anyone, anyone's just anyone's got a centrist five twenty, on the backing at point two six line, two hundred and fifty turns, point two six line, and hundred and eighty turns of the braid, which is what's on a braid on on a yeah. lot, like one two braid. That brings it perfect every time. Ah, so so yeah. the only way to do it is to pull it off, like basically really, really braid off onto the rod yeah. thing, and then read it back on. It takes like you've got to put a bit of effort in now, haven't you? So yeah. you put a bit of effort in, spend an hour doing it, 
read it on and off a few times is yeah. the only way you can get it to be right, basically. Yeah. Get it perfect. Otherwise, you're just guessing, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So, read it all off. If you, if you, if you underfilled it, basically, you probably filled it up to there, and I'm say, say I'm two, say I'm two or three mil short of the uh, yeah the lip. All I would do then is I'd reel all that back off there onto another spare spool. Yeah. Then I'd add on like 40, if I say 50 turns on this one again. Yeah. Then I'd reel, I'd reel all that one back on there. It was yeah. still narrow, still too little. I'd reel it all that back off again. I'd have another 50 metres on. Yeah. And, I'd put, and it might take me an hour. But then once I've done it, onto that spare spool, yeah. I'd then reel it all back on to the, the good spool. Yeah. And I'd count every single turn. So yeah. I, I know for every single centre, it's 250 turns of 026. And then the whole spool of 012 braid, which is basically what I use, and every time it's perfect. Perfect, mate. It's going to be like an hour to work out at the start in the garage with a bucket of water, but it, no, I'm going to do it every time I go fishing now, 250 turns, and then the whole spool of braid is on. I could spool up the whole, I could spool up 10 reels in half an hour. Yeah. Job but done. it's only for putting effort in the start and worked it out. So, in, in layman's terms, take a bit of time to get it right and write down. What you've yeah, got right on. Down, yeah, yeah, right down. I've got a bit on the top of a spool case in the garage, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Every time I go, I just ride on the wall in your garage. Yeah, lovely that is. Because um, we don't, we tend to use the same lines, don't we, all the time? So yeah, I've, I've got, and I've, I've still got this um, absolute break. I've still got the original sample one, which Robbie gave me back probably five years ago, four years ago. I've still got the original sample one on one of my big reels for Ireland. And yeah. it's, it's like proper gone, you know, it's like that's really dark. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's just pulled up. That's it's really got like, almost like, like a light, light pink. Yeah. And it's probably the best one I've got on there now. Because the more you use braid, the better it yeah. gets. So we don't change it, do we? No, we don't. We was, we was talking about that to Frankie, to be fair, when Frankie was on. And uh, to be fair, a Frank, quick Frankie wouldn't change it. He's normal and tight. Yeah, no, but he was saying he changes his uh, mono every three to four months. Yeah, I'm pretty regular with mono. Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially when you're fishing in the summertime, mate. You've got to be, because obviously... A few years ago at Evesham, uh, I looked a proper barbel one mm. day and I it just dum, and I went down the spot. I was like, dum, dum, oh. dum, and it just got rotten in the sunlight basically over the summer. Oh, it was from the year before, so if you, unless you keep it in a dark place all the time, but the yeah. problem is when you're back there fishing and it's sat like that, yeah, it's done, yeah, it just rots a bit, it's just it just rots. So, 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 what would you say, three months, bud? Every three months, yeah, it depends on if you go fishing, doesn't it? If you go fishing yeah. once a month, then probably yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. If you go fishing a few times a week, then yeah. you've got no choice. Especially if you're fishing for carp or barb or, yeah. Yeah. or big bream and stuff like that, it's no point in the sake of what well, I'm just spoiling like five or six quid. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not very expensive, is it? Five, yeah, yeah, five so to ten quid. It's then basically, it's a pint and a half, isn't it? So it's yeah. not really worth messing about, is it? Just change it over. No, lovely. So, the, the next question is I fish at 50 metres on a silty venue. And when I'm going to reel my feeder back, I can feel it stuck in the silt. I can't help but think there is a better better way of having my than having my feeder in the silt. Yeah, it's obviously a shallow venue. If it's even a really shallow venue like Barston that you're going to struggle with anyway. Yeah. Or his feeder's going in like a bag of spanners, basically. So first of all, I look at me casting and try and feather your cast down a bit, a bit softer, basically. Yeah. Probably use too heavy a feed. I mean, chucking 50 metres, that's uh, the way I do it. That's a 30 gram like bullet. Yeah. If you can chuck that 50 or 60 metres in the right conditions, then you're not having any weight going down, are you? So you're not hitting yeah. the water. You could, a lot of people use like a 45 gram window. Yeah. So that's hitting the water rock hard. In say four foot of water, that's going to be up to there in the silt, isn't it? Yeah. But if I'm using a 30 grammer with a cage and feathering it in, the chances are that's going to hit the surface a bit better and then sort of land a bit neater. Yeah. The other way is to on a, on a proper flatbed one. Yeah. And I hope, hope it's things like that, but you're going kind to of struggle to chuck that 50 or 60 metres, aren't you? You are, yeah. Probably, the other way to do it is spend a bit of time. Everyone says, oh, I'll be chucking this still, chucking this still. My own place like Southfield are full of silt and you can't avoid it, but a lot of places, I chuck in with one of them first of all. Like, um, you yeah. see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I can see it, yeah. That's, that's made by Mark Charnell, Sharky. Do you know Mark? No, no I don't know. Uh, what's, what's his name, bud? Mark Charnell. Is he Sharky, on, on Facebook, he said? Yeah, he's on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He made few, he made me a job like them a few years ago and does yeah. a, um, like a thirty gram and like a, that one. Like, well, that way. It's quite probably an ounce and a half. Yeah. But it's have a bit of a chuck around with braid straight through. You can feel it do, 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 yeah. like on your you can, on your feeding rod. Yeah. You can feel it back along and try and find a bit of gravel or something or mm. an area that's less silt. But first and foremost is I try and sort my cast and make sure I was hitting the clip as soft as or hitting them. The clip as soft as I could, not going in. You watch, yeah. you see sometimes it's going straight in the water. Yeah. 
it's going to be buried in the silt, isn't it? Yeah. So you just got to try and, that's the only way you do it really, smaller feeder or try and feather it in a bit softer. Happy days. Happy days. That's it's a bit of a, like you say, it's a tricky question, isn't it? Like, yeah, so that's like how long's a piece of street basically. Yeah. Unless, yeah. you know, unless you can sit beside someone and see how the casting action is and stuff like that. I mean, I watch some guys, and like you say, some of the feeders are going sometimes, even on even on World Championships matches, I've seen them go in like a house brick. Yeah. And then, but them guys over there, especially the European guys, they know how to feed when it's warm. Mm. So then their feeder's going in. A lot, a lot of the Euro, um, Eastern European guys cast about this much line from their rod tip to their feeder, and you think. He won't catch anything. Look, you think, look at that nut. Yeah. And he had like seven kilo and you have four. <laughs> but they were like, that's the difference. They know what the feed is doing when it's on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas like my guys just going in, it's just landed in a big heap and they're just thinking that'll be all right. Mm. But, what, what's, your, what's your thoughts on um, hook lengths, bud? Like, when the feeder goes in the water, I'm convinced that the hook length, you can't get it to straighten out. It'll always come by the feeder. Yeah, I think I think yeah, I do agree with that. So I watched that video last year that was made by another company. Yeah, and uh, it seemed to land within the same th- time. Yeah, within thirty centimeters, wasn't it? But what worries me about that is obviously rework. Well, they did it. It's obviously very limited where they can do it. It's a small lake. Yeah, and there's no toe, tow, no toe. There's no wind. Yeah. So some of the big locks in Ireland, like you have to fish four ounce tips sometimes. It's hacking around that hard. The fishing four ounce like on a big lock, but something's like five, six, seven miles wide. Yeah, and like it's kind of down, it's coming down the main lock, it's up like ten miles long, so it tips arch around. And even on rivers like over here, it's this flow. So I get the principle of fishing thirty meters, there's no flow, or no toe. Yeah, it lands in the spot. But then I can't work out. You go to places like like Gavlan fishing lock head a lot, and that, and they fish great big long tail and stuff like that. Yeah, and there's no way it can be falling in a straight line the whole time because a ten foot tail. It's yeah. got to be from at an angle. I can't yeah. see how it's not. Yeah. So I think there's ways to do it. I think fishing fluorocarbon makes it a bit stiffer. Mm. Probably kicks off a bit. Yeah. But then you've got twice, twice as dense lines, so it's sinking faster. So yeah. I don't use that. I mean, everyone. I've been, I've been told I use loads of fluorocarbon for fishing for hybrids in Ireland, but I can tell you now, I've never put fluorocarbon on fishing no. for hybrid in life. No. Because rather it float than sink. Yeah. You sink for missing a bite. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. keep on using fluorocarbon means you can get a bad every single beat. This is the way you used to use power line for all my fishing over there. Oh, like more, oh right. mate. Up there, is, that's all I use, pretty much. Power line. I, I, know, I know, everyone says, well, your mic's up more than it is. And it doesn't it, as does long it matter? As, you, as long as you're happy with what you're using. Then exactly, yeah. 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 I know people like the hook boxes are all the same, like little lines yeah. and it's all cut up. But look, it doesn't matter what you look like, it's what you weigh in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the day, power I line, mate. I, I, I don't th- think you can find anything to beat it. Been using it for years and years. Yeah, same as that. Yeah, well, I still use I, I'm fishing power change a bit now. I fish um, Aki power. Aki power. For me, because obviously it's just a bit softer, basically. Yeah. But first, feed fish and don't use anything else apart from power yeah, line. So, yeah. so anyone that's that doesn't know what they look like, the difference kind of thing, that they, they pretty much look the same, don't they, bud? But that one's yeah, very obviously similar, Aki yeah. Power. So, what's the difference between these two, bud? Just for people at home. The, 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 the Aki Power is um, probably a bit more high tech, shall we say? It's a bit less stretch in it. Yeah. It's um, a little bit softer, and should lends itself more for me for fishing the pole. Yeah. It's a bit neater and stuff like that. But the power lines, obviously, it's to the test of time. It's a bit. It's just you've got proper stretch now, and you know, it just doesn't. Mm. It's like tow rope, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, but this that, this that. is known for for not miking up correctly. But this apparently is bang on, isn't it, bud? Bang on, man. Yeah, yeah. History is accurate for accuracy. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's that's the two differences. But I, I've had this now about twelve months. I've not I've not opened it because I just can't I can't get away from that stuff. Yeah, but I've, you know, I've used the Aki Power uh, um, Holcroft this winter and it was rock hard. I fished it in a like O nine on the yeah. feeder. Yeah. Just for the device, it's a bit more delicate than yeah. power line. But I just don't see any reason why you wouldn't use power line if I'm trying to win a match or something. There's no point coming second. Is there? No, no, it's not. Just no. Me, no. Well, yeah, that's that's all my questions for you, bud. I have got loads that I could ask you. However, I want to keep I want to keep these these things like quite short and sweet. Yeah, well, I'm sure we can do and it again. Uh, yeah, we can, and when you're free, mate, I'd lo- I'd love to get you back on. We can check, me, check me diary at the moment. It's so moment we've uh, <laughs> so busy with this whole coronavirus thing yeah same same at any time mate give us a shout out thank you very much just like to say 
massive thanks to Mike and uh, thank you to everyone at, at home for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. See you later. I was hoping you were in that one, don't you? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, bud. <laughs>